thank you for being here because here is where it's at. And I really mean that in a number of different ways. Um, first of all, I want to add my thanks to, to Johan and his whole team of helpers for putting on, help me thank them again for an amazing conference. <laughs> Any one of us who have put on a conference or a workshop know how much work that takes, so really appreciate that. But here is really a deeper meaning for me. Um, it's the notion or the very work of transformation that you've come for. For, I want to ask, for how many of you is this the first transformation conference of these? Wow, look around, this is amazing. And so how many of you were at either one or two of the other ones? All right, this is great. We have innovation in this room. <laughs> well, welcome and welcome back. Um, you see, before we went to transformation conferences, we went to adaptation conferences, mitigation conferences, sustainability conferences, I don't know, urban city development, you name it, forest, land use, all these things. And maybe we still go to these. But the one thing I think that brings us all together here is that we realized we need transformation. We need to do much deeper work. And not just because it's the new fashionable word, you know. <laughs> it's not just the word that we better use now to be in or be on the cutting edge or to get funding. At least I hope we're not just here to fill basically old wine into fresh bottles. <laughs> um, what I hope we're here for is the realization that we need to do something much more profound than prepare or protect or restore. If we want to ensure a livable, safe, resilient, or any of these more alluring ways of having a future on this planet. So for now, let me just use this shorthand, my title, to capture the goal of transformation that we're facing right now. Life in its most basic and the richest sense of that word. So, I'm going to assume for a moment, we can agree, <laughs> at least for the moment, on this all-encompassing but very basic goal that we're here for. Then can we draw some boundaries around what this transformation is all about? When I had this conversation that you, Terry, had with, with Yohan, when I had that same conversation with Yohan about what do you want from this keynote, he said, well, yours is one of the early ones. Define transformation for folks. Tell them why it's important and give them some hope. Inspire them. It's like a thanks. <laughs> uh, nothing like an oxymoronic charge, right? I've provided a definition that will either bore you to tears or anger you because I don't capture quite the nuance that you would like to hear in it. And I'm supposed to inspire you at the same time. The pedantic and the grand. So thanks for that. <laughs> well, let me just put it this way. What I have to say in response to that charge is actually not going to take up my entire 18 minutes or whatever I have, um, which is practically unheard of for me, <laughs> if you know anything about my talks. I want to resist the temptation to fill up all the space with words. And instead, I want to say what I have to say and say it slowly, with gravitas, if you will. <laughs> so let me invite you into what I have to say that is not so much a presenta presentation as a meditation. And maybe at the risk of alienating you, more a prayer than a speech. The only way that I know how to begin to respond to your charge is to go big. By gaining some perspective on the hugeness of the challenge that is before us. In the minutia, I think we're going to get lost. Um, get lost about what this b transformation is, business is about and what we must accomplish. But it is a, whatever, 12 minute or so definition. So every word is part of that definition. So here's where I want to start. Actually, I want to start here. You see, my partner and I, we got here a couple of days early and we got to spend them in Edinburgh and it has this great science center called Our Dynamic Earth. 
And it's just a tad bit ironic that one of the letters of Earth's name was broken. Um, it's a place where you experience to touch and feel, see, read, hear how Earth came into being and how it changed over time through fire and ice, water and wind, meteorites and continental drift. And then, of course, by the small but mighty hands of microbiota, all the many, all the way to the, the mighty but small number of megafauna. That journey that they take you on reminds you that Earth is the only planet in the solar system, and who knows how far beyond that, on which this kind of richness of life has evolved. The only planet we've got. And in fact, the one thing that you learn is that Earth knows a whole lot already about transformation. For example, that nothing new gets created without letting go of, or maybe even destroying, the old. And so as you walk through the eons of Earth's dynamic past, you realize just how relentless and momentous these changes have been. How recently only we hominids arrived on Earth and how far we've come even in just a couple hundred thousands of years. From being at risk constantly of be being killed by something, cold, predators, diseases, and to being at risk of killing everything that we depend on. It's a journey of Earth impacting humans for the first 195,000 of these 200,000 years of our existence to the point where in the last 5,000 years or so, we've turned the table on Earth and are impacting it in a way no other single species ever has. And so that dynamic, and again and again, transformative past, I think puts the right kind of light on the transformation challenges before us. The question now is how we're going to take ourselves and life on Earth forward. What do we need to do to have life and a human future at all on this planet? Look, as that museum rightly points out, we humans actually have some amazing traits, skills, and capacities to, do, to work with to do that. Some that you might call spiritual. And of course, those that you might call social. And crucially, our curiosity. And of course, our technological prowess. But it all hinges on a direction in which we apply these capabilities, doesn't it? And that means we have to deeply question what drives and directs the systems that are seemingly on autopilot, destroying the diversity of life, human and otherwise. We have to deeply investigate the practices, structures, institutions that underlie climate change and all things unsustainable, as well as the relationships, belief systems, values, and ethics that seem to not let us shift away from them and fast enough. And just think of some of the paradigms that this deep interrogation will have to involve. We just heard about mindsets. Think of it even bigger. Here, we're still in Edinburgh the place where Adam Smith worked, father of the free market economic theory which elevated self-interest and competition to virtues in our society, as these were believed to drive economic prosperity. So much so, I don't know if you know this, that we named a minor planet after him. 1283, eight, whatever, Adam Smith. No idea where it is, but somewhere out there behind we Venus. And then his contemporary, David Hume, by many seen as one of the most influential figures in Western philosophy. Like him, I think we must question human nature, the nature of human morality, and ask as he did, 
how can we apply and in what measure our faculty for reason and our passions to the affairs of the world? So it's from these big questions that I want to draw back the arc to why we're here and what this transformation is all about. You see, I did a little bit of research in preparation for this keynote. Or rather, this too is more like a meditation, the kind that you fall into when you do some very tedious data entry. <laughs> I look back at the previous two transformation conferences to see what we concern ourselves with, how we think of transformation. What you see here is a word cloud made from all the paper titles that were given at the first transformation conference, the one in Oslo in 2013. Under Karen O'Brien's leadership, maybe not entirely surprisingly, if you know her work, we focused a lot on climate change, but also issues like governance, learning, networks, and communities. And then in 2015 in Stockholm, under Per Olsen's leadership, look at that shift. The predominant focus then was on sustainability, the Anthropocene, systems and scales of transformation, but also things like initiatives, the social and the ecological, approaches, innovation, a sense of managing our way through transformative change. Maybe the most important shift I actually noticed in this is the shift from using singular to plural, which is why there is that big S in the middle of it. All of a sudden, all these words showed up as approaches, pathways, initiatives, transformations. And now, you were waiting for this, right? <laughs> Here we are, 2017, under Yon Fazy's leadership, yet another shift. Practice is big, as is intended, but also research and its links to practice through transdisciplinarity, change more generally, not just climate change, but that too is there, along with sustainability, and new words like labs, design, potential, process, acceleration, strategies, creating, and action. Now, of course, you might ask, is this just a reflection of the chairs of these conferences? Or are these the moods and fashions of our community? Or is this the evolution of our field? Or is this the work of transformation? Maybe it's a bit of all of them. But if it is, we must ask, is this all that this transformation work is about? Or are we missing something? Is it as deep as it needs to be if it is life we want? Or maybe it's not exactly missing. It's just hiding in the very small words that come up only once or twice in these words, in all three of them. Words like love and death, power, poverty, and conflict. Words you can actually see all around in modern and historic Edinburgh, like the world's end danger, demolition, the fact that you need hard hats to do this work of transformation, that there is absolutely no guarantee that we will succeed, that there are dark vaults with bloody histories in that city, and I might add in every city, that we must descend into as a matter of course of all transformation and dig up the literal and metaphorical landmines of how we're treating each other. Look at the hard truth of our war against Earth. Sit in the inevitable quiet of the crash of our old systems. And find in the rubble what, if anything, is worth keeping. free ourselves from the veils of illusion that have prevented us from seeing certain truths and ask, as they did in the Dynamic Earth Center, whether in the long term we will be casualties or survivors of and by our own hand. 
So in coming to a close, let me then bring us back to this conference, just now as we're beginning. This is what's on the menu. It's the same wordle, just a few more words added to it. Just, you know, in increase your N, right? <laughs> This is how we currently circumscribe what transformation is all about. Are you satisfied with our co-created definition? Is it big enough? Deep enough? Can you find life in here? Actually, it is on here. <laughs> it's just tiny. There. <laughs> So I say, let's make it big. <laughs> let's make it a lot bigger than this. In each of our talks, in all of the practice sessions, in all of the discussions that we have, in all of the informal conversations that we have, let's ask ourselves, is what and how we research, what we imagine is possible, and what we do day in and day out, if you're in practice, oriented towards, towards sustaining life, capital L, life. Are we d dedicated to serving life on earth, a safe, meaningful, and dignified life? And for all people, not just for some, and not just for humans. Because if it's not, are we not just wasting <coughs> precious time here? If it's not, do you have hope for our future? Can you give Tanya here, the happy painter of this picture, hope for hers, for life? Which brings me finally to the title of my talk, which comes from a line in a poem by Bill, Hol Bill Holm, who says, for it is life we want. We want the world, the whole beautiful world, alive, and we alive in it. That is the actual God we long for and seek, yet we have already found it if we open our senses, our whole bodies, thus our souls. That is why I have written and intend to continue until someone among you takes up the happy work of keeping the chain letter of the soul moving along into whatever future may come. Until someone among you takes up the happy work of keeping the chain letter of the soul moving along into whatever future will come. Thank you.